Hello, fellow gamers. I'm Glory Hound, and this is Dr. Glory Hog. I was singing the waffle song. Still. If you don't go ahead and, and say Titans your name, fast. Waffles, 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 waffles. It's gonna be one of those days, everybody. Yep. <laughs> if you don't say your name fast enough, though, I'm just gonna start saying it. Here's in a deal. ridiculous way. When we decided to do a quick pivot because Call of Madness oh, got yeah. canceled, yeah. and we decided to do Come On's animation trilogy, the trio mm -hmm. of games. Um, I started looking at. Teen Titans stuff, right? Because we and love the Teen Titans. That was like that was a really fun experience watching. It that was with a my fun kid. cartoon to watch. Like we still watch cartoons. I'm gonna I'm gonna admit it right now. I still watch cartoons. I watched the new She-Ra. Okay, it was amazing. <laughs> and so then I started looking up like the best songs from like Teen Titans Go. Oh, and so yeah. I was doing that right before the show. Basically, I was listening to all the best songs and everything. And my favorite is Beast Boy episode. too. Beast Boy is the best. It's and tofu. hello to our chat today. We have so many people in chat. It's so nice to have all of you here. We have Xavier, Xavier Games, Alan, Kabuki Tedder, Kid. Kabuki, that's right. Matthew. Matthew, who's what here Stephen? first time? Was it Matthew yeah, who Matthew's was here first time? time? Welcome to chat. Which hello, I really everybody. Like Battle the, cry. I feel like the ultimate viewing experience probably live because then you're involved in the chat. Oh, absolutely. Because right? we get to talk directly to you, and then if like we say something ridiculous, you're like, that's. <laughs> I always wonder what it's like to watch the show like after the fact. Like, do you sit there and like watch, but then also like quickly try to read through the live chat and be like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you have mm -hmm, to. Mm -hmm. You have to have eyes on both things. Like, very tedious to chat while also listening to us, right? <laughs> Hello, Andrew and Robert. How are you guys doing? <laughs> so Stefan said he really liked the dwellings and dice from videos. It was nice to see how the doc was happy at the end of dwellings. Yeah, I lost like an idiot, <laughs> but I would still play it again, a hundred percent. I still have the solo rule book on my desk. I just need to cut out of work early to play. I almost it's played so it good. last night, but I was a little tired because we did a little <laughs> video for Tantrum House too last night. And then, yeah, at the end of Dice Throne Adventures, I wanted to switch sides and join the Fallen Barbarian and stuff. Instead. Also, if you're new here, make sure to go ahead and like and subscribe and ring the bell so whenever we go live, you get notified. And since we did do the Tantrum House thing last night, their announcement for their best Kickstarter of 2020. What are you doing right now? I was going to color your hair with this silver sharpie marker. I have... So many ridiculous bloopers from that footage. It was like, here's kept here's usable laugh. footage. Here was my blooper footage. <laughs> it was like too much. And that's a technical so, term. So yes, technical, this, very and technical. And then uh, that will be probably posted for our Patreon people. So if you're interested in any of that or checking out our Discord, make sure to check out the links below. Yeah, we've had a bunch of people join the Discord, yeah. which has been good, right? I I'm always really like when Discord's that. busy. Well, I, I like having an open space where people can talk about Kickstarters, like our show. Well, we because... talk about Kickstarters, video games, and we were just talking about, like, movies from, like, the early 2000s earlier, too. Right, so. but I'm saying as far as, like, the Kickstarters go, because I always feel like everybody in chat, as well as us, we need to express our actual opinion on these Kickstarters, because there's so many of them that it's super important to get everybody's view on these games, right. you know? Right, so I think the way I would kind of phrase that because we have a time to give our full opinion right. but they don't right, right. oh absolutely they're limited to like a comment so you can get a lot more information oh, yeah. by going because to the discord let me just say hold on all of our all of our subscribers out there you all are becoming kickstarter experts for sure like there is so much knowledge out there that's <laughs> okay true. that's true <laughs> And I like having a collective where we can all discuss that. So I really waffles, appreciate waffles, everybody participating. Waffles, 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 waffles. <laughs> all right. So first up, we have a mint bid. This is by Pocketo Games. This is for, I think it was like one to six, or I'm sorry, two to six players. Let me see here. I thought they had a single player. It says one to six players on here. Okay, that's interesting. Because there was an then, AI that you're going to have to use. It's 15 to 60 minutes on this. We actually got a copy of this to go ahead and preview. I was really excited about and I love the theme of this I love their video in this one here basically what you're going to be doing in the game is you're going to be bidding but not just bidding solely as you as a person you're you can also bid with partners to your left or to your right right and that's the really big thing which that's huge they highlighted here and then we also huge. highlighted in our preview video so because you're bidding with those partners to the left and the right as you're bidding around in that round robin fashion you can change which partners that you work with so those cards that you end up getting together with somebody go kind of in the middle like that between two cities sort yeah, of thing yeah or between the yeah. two new castles of mad king ludwig which, style like where you're working with somebody next to you but you're still trying to beat them <laughs> that was quite the hair flip <laughs> yes yeah. not bidding on souls this time it's, it's mints no, you're bidding with you know mints what? on properties that would have been oh, also a good theme so, oh she's <laughs> 
<laughs> Ooh, her dance card is empty. Oh, that guy just totally went over there. What a ripoff. I know, right? I love that portion of it, though, a lot. Can you play with Altoids? Job. You absolutely can. Watch that this means... guy. Here he comes. He's like, you know what? Yeah, I got you, girl. Don't worry. <laughs> he comes over and he's like, I got two mints. And she's like, what? Two mints? Sorry, I... I have whole little voices that they I, have. I can see that. Are He's you like, just going to narrate out. the whole thing? Two mints. She's like, oh, yeah, we're a four mint couple now. <laughs> and there's some excitement there. I want, They did a pretty good They're job with these. They're not a four mint couple. They're a four mint partnership. Right. Well, it's a temporary partnership. But look how excited they are. They even get a hug, a little, come on, that's great. <laughs> yeah, it's big. I really like the fact, though, that you are actually bidding with partners in this game. It's a creepy arm reach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming these people know each other. Because you got to figure they're mimicking people that would be playing this game together, like, at, you know, a family game night or something. So, you know. So, here's the thing. Look, they're having a good time. When the properties that you win are next to your you and your partner and everything, then you get to roll at the end of the round, and then you get profit off those. Right. So not only, so you really, really, really want to get the maximum amount of buildings you can, while also having like some building over there as well, where you're trying to kind of match up mints and stuff like that to get the highest victory points. So stuff like that. Yeah. I like that you can play at a lower player count, because usually bidding games you can't. That's usually their biggest crutch, is you have to have at least three and if somebody doesn't exactly like bidding games or doesn't understand how bidding games work, that can make it kind of rough. So there is like something to kind of help with that. You got that little AI where you can roll and stuff. Can't fault that video for enthusiasm. <laughs> That's you can't. right. I mean, it's better than any other video on this page for sure. Kabuki Kid, also a master at all dancing, says they definitely are not dancing the right way. <laughs> they dance like they're having, yeah. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I can see that. I thought it was a very enthusiastic video, though. I thought they did a good job. It was fun. It was really fun. We did our video first, and then we submitted it, and then we saw this video, and I was like, okay, oh, we're we all, the same. We all have the same, like, thoughts going on on this, yeah, right? we all had the same idea. I just want to watch our video, but that's fine. So, in this one here, what are your thoughts, Doctor? It's interesting. I mean, it's $10, and I know you're always a sucker for the mint games because they're, like, $10. What? I like I like bidding games. I don't feel like you like bidding games as much because I usually try to like get in there all auctioneer style and start raffling things off. I would I was probably an auctioneer in like a past life or something. So you like bidding games because you were an auctioneer in a past life? Is that what you just said? Yeah, because whenever we start playing something like Raccoon Tycoon, I'm like, boom, I drop one down and I start getting the bidding going and then I drop out and let you guys take it and then I drop the next one and I'm like, go and go, go, and then okay. I drop out and so as a note, too, for everyone listening at home. I made Raccoon Tycoon last like 20 minutes because I just auctioned off everything. The doctor is the worst person to play a bidding game with. Absolutely 100% the worst person. He is such a jerk whenever he's playing bidding Pump games. Like and dumb. Such a jerk. Like, oh, I, I love and also hate playing bidding games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is a two person variant because you have like a little die that you can roll that works with like the AI and stuff. Uh, the doctor does not make mistakes. Did that say a two person variant? It sure did, Matthew. This goes from what was it, one to six players. So, yes, you have a two player variant and then you have a solo and it's $10. It's the little mint tin game. It's basically going to be the little mint tokens in it, a deck of cards, and a die and everything. And then your instructions in there. I really love Paquetto's Mint series games as far as just taking them places with me and they're easy to break out and teach people. I think this game is probably the easiest out of their series to teach, like the most straightforward and probably the most interactive one that they have in their series. So I think that if you're interested in the Mint Tin games, this is going to be a, and bidding games. You yes. have to like both. You have to like both. You have to like the bidding and games. I like bidding too. games personally. <laughs> but. You know, it's not for everybody. I will say the bidding games brings out probably my worst side because I do. I pump up the price and then I dump it constantly. Yeah, you're a jerk and about it. Makes it makes people mad. I will always win. Like I did I don't I don't think I do as okay. well like an Irish gauge, but Raccoon Tycoon and the estates I typically do pretty good at. So Stefan asked, did the doctor bids also um did Dr. Dance bids also a blooper. So did you dance in the bloop or in the bloopers? No. I don't think you danced, but here's the deal. I'm a really good dancer, either tops or bottoms. I can either move my bottom half of my body or the top half, but never the same at the same time. It just doesn't work. Can we go to Greg's house and haul away his stash? His stash of what? Of mat or of uh, games? Yeah, he Let's does see have here. a lot. So, um, 
wait, the worst person is that constantly because what he tries to make egg me into playing bidding games? <laughs> yeah, because Alan was talking about bidding games earlier, and I was like, Raccoon Tycoon is great. Like, it's a great bidding game. Uh, anyway, this is fun because you have the bidding portion, you have the uniqueness of having the two people bid together here, and then you also have the uniqueness of trying to get all these cards once they are put together in the right way where you're going to maximize your VP points. So you're wanting to bid to, because your chances of getting mints are going to go up with the more cards you have. And then as far as VP points are, you're going to be looking at the cards, trying to figure out which cards are going to gain you the maximum amount of VP as you're putting them in there. So a lot of game for actually like a look for like 10 bucks cash. Yeah, Aww. I mean, you can't. Yeah, I do not. I'm sorry. Kabuki is killing me over here. I do not <laughs> dance like that, that macho man <laughs> dance. That is... It's not that bad, but I am not coordinated to move both halves of my body at the same time. Okay? Luke says, I'll probably back this one compared to other Kickstarters. It's practically free. $10 and is for real. very inexpensive. <laughs> for real. All right, Doctor, would you back this game? Yeah, I would back this one. I mean, it's $10 the bidding game. I generally like bidding games. It's nice, portable. There's nothing to not like about this. I think what's the worst case scenario, if you don't enjoy it as much as you think, it's a $10 game. Yeah, and you can gift it to somebody for $10. Like, no problem. Just... Like, give it to somebody who likes those type of things. I like how you scroll through this whole thing and, like, you just didn't quite make it to the video of us being ridiculous. Oh, there it is. Play that video. That's what I want to see. Just the first intro part where you can see all of the different characters. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's Minty Money Bucks. Oh, yeah. You just MT want to refresh. Come on. This was the best right here. Oh, this Christina. one right here was, like, so good. Boom. Our kid's like super, super star for the dramatic. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I know it's like my kid and I'm supposed to love it, but Oh, Xavier she says that me. acting though, right? I the funniest thing about that video is like my face is like not shown, I don't think, really like at all. The whole time because no. like I purposely brought like my hat down, but then it got like ridiculous to so, like I'm just doing like all these things. Yeah, it's it oh, was intense. Oh my gosh. It was a lot of fun to do for sure. I thought it was really fun, Xavier. I would back it. I'm gonna. I'm going to back yeah, it. Yeah, ten I thought bucks. It, was really it just good. seems yeah. pretty easy. Though it's basically all based on if you like uh, bidding games or not. If you don't like bidding games, probably a pass. But if you like bidding games, ten dollars. You can't really get cheaper than that, especially on Kickstarter. Oh yeah, absolutely. Next up, we have Epic Seven Arise, the board game. This is from Farside Games. Let me get this going. This is here. a whole world. Let me tell you, this is one of those things that makes me feel old. Because I start watching, I'm like, this is like a whole, I feel like this is like an anime series that has like seven seasons, and I'm just now hearing about it. I'm like, what is this Dragon Ball Z the kids are always talking about? That's how I feel when I watch this video. I feel like there's a whole world of lore out there that I don't know anything about. This is a video and game they, series. I know, yeah. but I'm saying that, they're, well, video game series have a lot of lore. I'm just like, I don't feel like I know anything about it, like the series itself. So it makes me feel bad. And old. I think this is not just like a video game series. I think this is like an app mm -hmm. video game series. So well, not I've, even like... I've played a bunch like this. Right, but, but not, not even like one. a one, you know, at your PlayStation or anything like that. A yeah. console one, but on your iOS apps and stuff. So I was like, what? They made like this iOS app into a game. And coming into games like this, I'm always insanely skeptical i games like this i probably scrutinize the most like i went in yeah i'm like background checking like the company i'm looking for their website i'm looking at their twitter their facebook like i'm looking at any sort of any information at all that comes up especially since they're a first-time creator so like i looked into this a lot and okay. i'm actually really excited about this gameplay in this <laughs> okay about the gameplay itself the gameplay itself looks it, it, amazing. It looks pretty cool. It's an interesting idea that you're like a team, right? And yeah. You're fighting, but you're also still trying to gain the most points for being like the best champion. So Petter says, I need to look at MVM's review to see about leveling. Absolutely. Because this one here really, really piqued my interest once they started talking about the mechanics of the game where, because it's like, it kind of reminds me of like an Arcadia Quest style game. Okay. Except you're playing in teams and then at the end, you determine kind of who did the mo who did the most damage and who like contributed the most, and then you get stuff based off of that. Like you get your upgrades based off of that, which I thought was really interesting in this. And this reminds me of playing like Summoner's War back in the day. Like I played that on my phone a lot. The same type of kind of idea. The minis are so pretty, says Nosferatu, and Petter says I love the aesthetic on this one. I feel like the game is huge and the play is smallish. I think that the play is that in between i think it's enough it's not going to be like an advanced 
board game or something that you would only play with board gamers or that's going to take a lot to get into. But I don't feel like it's going to be so simplistic that, like, because I really liked how the monsters had, like, the card draw system and stuff like that, where you're drawing the cards to see their hits and stuff like that. And you still have the track to see where everybody's initiative is. Like, there's a lot of things still going on in this game that make it, like, a full game, not just, like, an IP put on something. Right, but is this a $100 game? I'm That's not fair. I don't want to compare it to some things, but ISS Vanguard, Yeah, because this Tainted is 95 Grail, bucks. Kingdom Rush, those are all $100 games that came with, like, a lot. It's so, so, this game is so cute. The minis are so cute. I feel like this is definitely geared towards people that are already fans. <laughs> I think it's definitely geared to people that are already fans of the app, right? More yeah. than anything else. Because there's a lot of fan service, it looks like. So I feel like without having played the app, I'm missing out on a big core part of it. So it's just not as interesting looking to me because of that. Because I'm not... I like like anime and I've dabbled in it, but I'm not a huge anime fan. And I haven't played this particular app. So I feel like I'm missing out on like 50% of what's going to make this game exciting, right? So... Like Kingdom Rush was more exciting because I'd played the app. Well, that's true. That's Vikings true. Gone Wild was more exciting because I played the app. Right. I know those are all Lucky Duck games, but they're the ones that are really killing it in the <laughs> app the board game conversion. So. I was actually surprised going into this, though, with all of the technical level, I guess, gaming stuff that was happening on the board with a new company. You know what I'm saying? Like, coming yeah. into the market. Because originally I was looking at this and I was like, all right, is this just the video game company that kind of was like, all right, we're going to go ahead and launch this game. But I think it, the video game company like gave the IP to another company is what it looks like from me reading articles and stuff like that. And then this other company has taken the IP and made this game. Okay. I, feel, I think I'm kind of in the same boat that Luca is right now where Luca is saying, Luke L is saying, they don't have the bandwidth or the shelf space for like another semi co-op dungeon call when they don't really have any knowledge or buy into the IP itself. That's fair. That's because really it's fair. It's got to compete, right? And that's hey, let's be real. If you've been following the show for a while, or even if you're if you're brand new, we're talking about four Kickstarters every week, fifty two weeks that's a, a year. A lot of Kickstarters. It is hard to pick which ones make the table. I mean, even Dwellings didn't make my table as fast as it should have, and so a game that should have been on my top ten of 2020 ended up didn't get played until like January 7th mm -hmm. because there's just so many games. It's mm -hmm. really hard. So they have to compete with each other and you got to make hard choices sometimes. So you got to figure out what, I mean, we're going to have Frosthaven come in this year. Has anybody in chat the ever sand. played the Epic, the Epic 7 IO, like the game itself, like the video game? Has anybody in chat played it? I have, I'm curious to know. I have found that nine times out of 10, whenever there's a game, a board game based off of an app or a video game, I'm almost more likely to check out the video game and get that for like 10, 15 bucks instead of getting the $100 board game. Like how awesome is that for video game companies? They're like, we're going to go ahead and launch a board game and then we're just going to get video game sales. You want to know why? Let me tell you why. This has happened. So Darkest Dungeon, I bought it because of seeing the, vi the board game from Mythic. Yep. I got into Lucky, um, wow, what is it called now? Well, Kingdom Rush. Kingdom Rush. I did because of the board game. Yeah. Because I ended up getting the app after the fact. You went with all the Vikings. I did Vikings, Vikings Gone, Gone Wild. Wild. I did the same yeah. thing. And I spent too much money on Vikings Gone Wild. Got into that one. <laughs> so I've done it a couple times now. Even, even with Slay, Slay the, the Spire. Spire. I played first. We played that one first. But we got I'd it first. But if I'd seen the board game, I could see it definitely go in, in, into that way. So with this one here. I'm not very good at dwellings. That's true. Thanks, Battle Cry. Since it is a first-time creator, and they actually started putting this stuff up in July of 2020, I would say, one, if you are going to back this game, know that they are a first-time creator. They're probably going to have delays. This is an ambitious project, too. It's a very ambitious project. I'm curious Plus to see when they're saying the estimated. I don't know if anybody... February 2021? Wait, no. No. What? That can't be right. What? Then they'd already what? have had the game already produced. That's probably a typo. That's got to be a typo. There's no way. I only saw one review on here from Man vs. Meeple. Right, right, from Man vs. Meeple. I don't think it's possible that there's, 2021. there's like only one, one copy out there. They'd have to have this already produced in order to produce it that quickly. And to be honest, I don't even expect it by, by February 2021 if they had it fully built. Even if they, this was just because... an ordering system and then shipping, yeah, it wouldn't ship by then. Did I just ruin your comment? Yeah. <laughs> I just ruined your comment. There has been a lot of chatter from the board game design community about shipping right now. And there's a bunch of games that are just stuck in the ports in China 
that just haven't been shipped yet. And the only thing they're waiting on is to be able to be shipped to the U.S. And that's taking a long time. And not to mention like Brexit and how that's changing things and everything else. So there's a lot of flux right now in shipping. A lot of board game companies are really taking a hit on shipping right now. Okay, there we go. Okay, so that makes more sense, everyone. Thank you so much, chat. I appreciate that. There we go. February of 2022. Makes more sense. I was like, what the? I'm like, that can't be right. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. Did I totally miss that? Okay. That's, <laughs> for the app only? Okay. I, honestly, that still seems Phew. pretty ambitious for a new company, but... It does. Expect delays, oh. because there's going to be minis and no, stuff. No, this had more reviews because it's got Becca Scott from Who was it that Good just Time had the Society. one? Oh my gosh, I'm so mixed up. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was actually really impressed with say, all the different... This week, people that they had on this. I will say this week, most of the games they did had such a good job. multiple reviewers. The one they only had job. one reviewer, reviewer, which was actually a gameplay video, was Come, Come on. on, and they had Quackalo for that's all three right. of them. That's right. That's right. That's what it was because which I was like, really, Jesse. really impressed. We're fans of Jesse, but that's only one person for all three is kind yeah, of crazy. Like but that's... it's a seven-day campaign. To, well, we'll talk about that when we we'll, get to it. We'll talk about it when we get there. I have thoughts. Doctor, would you back this game? No, just because I feel like it, there's no way I can compete with things like Frosthaven that we're going to be getting around the same time and ISS Vanguard and some of these other games I'm already excited about because either they have IPs I've already bought into or they've got game system or mechanics I'm really excited about. So I don't know where this one fits on my shelf. And this is like a tertiary thing for me, right? Like anime is like not my favorite thing. I enjoy it when I watch it, but I never really go out of my way to watch it. So like usually board games or video games, stuff based off of anime as like the main kind of source is like two or three steps removed for me, for me to get excited. I mean, it's no Last Airbender, is all I'm going to say. <laughs> That's about where I am. I'm that guy who casually watches Last Airbender and thinks he knows what anime is. All right, so I'm, I'm going to say I really like the mechanics of this game. Like, I think this game is going to be a lot of fun to play with people in that semi-cooperative sort of skirmishy sort of game, what's going on here, you know, where you're fighting the bad guys and everything. I really... Really enjoy that. I enjoy that, you know, you can make combos with your friends and your characters. This feels like it's going to be, like, really exciting and fun to play because of that, you know? I think in the right group. I f but... I feel like if you don't have a lot of these types of games, but Andrew's saying he's got Frosthaven, Bard's Sung, Darkest Dungeon. He's going to be spending a lot of time in dungeons. <laughs> but for me, having a first-time creator produce a game like this, I know that there's going to be plenty of delays and everything, and I'm going to be on the fence for this game because... I kind of want to see where this company and this game is headed, and I would like to know more. But if you are interested in it, I would say go ahead and check it out because I'm, I'm not it, one, it looks really interesting. I'm not one to be an early adopter either. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to buy, like, I'm not going to get the PlayStation 5 until it's been out for six months at least. The biggest thing for me. That's me, though. Hold, okay, so here here it is, everyone. The biggest and I gotta thing for me. I got to win the lottery to get one, apparently. For first time creators is community involvement. If I know people that have been involved in the community for several years and I've seen them places and I've seen them trying out their game places and they have this experience and I see them reaching out to the community and stuff and asking questions, I'm more apt to back a first time creator because of those things as opposed to somebody I just haven't seen. And that's not necessarily bad for this company because they might not know about all of this awesome board gameness that we have going on in the community and everything just yet but i hope to see more from them in the future but yeah, i'm not a risk taker so <laughs> that's just me okay <laughs> i would say that's not accurate you are definitely a risk taker <gasps> well i did marry you i did marry yeah, you that was so, the number one i mean example. that was that was the number one <laughs> very risky i did not have a good pedigree let's just say that chat are you all backing i want to know if you're backing the Paquetto game or Mint? if you yeah, or if you're backing Epic 7. I want to know who our backers are out here. Let's see. I hear. feel like we're going to have way more backers on the Mint because it's easier where I think Petter is the only one I've seen that's like jumping on and off the fence where he was saying, I'm going to back it. And then he was like, I'm not going to back it. I dropped my pledge. And and I'm going to back it. Petter's just toying with their emotions. <laughs> He's like on and off, on and off. They just keep seeing Petter's pledge pop up and then disappear, then pop up and then disappear. So Kabuki says, I'm the same with electronics. Usually best not to adopt early. Totally yeah. agree. You got to figure out which one's better, first. right? I wait I wait till the, uh, what is it, the one where the battery oh, exploded? I always wait till the phone's done exploding and be yeah. illegal to have on a plane before yeah. I buy it. Yeah, you don't want to do that, I right? I get the newest iPhone. I waited a couple months. I, I gave it a good six months to a year, then I jump in. 
Let's see here. Petter says, Epic 7, maybe. If you do, I mean, we'll have to come over and play. <laughs> no, he lives in the frozen north. We're not going to the frozen north. All right, it's next like up. It's like 60 here, and you were wearing a sweater earlier. Yeah, you can't handle chilly. where Petter lives. That was super chilly. You would die. <laughs> Next up, we have the Animation Collection by Come On Games. This features three different games, a Scooby-esque style games, a Looney Tunes game, and a Teen Titans Go game. I'm dying. Nas probably said they just started working at Samsung. Hey, one of my favorite phones was actually a Samsung slider back in the day. when I used to, I used to work for T-Mobile, so I used to have a whole bunch of phones. But I don't usually buy them right away. I usually wait six months. So, Doctor, since you kind of really dug into these three games, oh, can you tell us a little you. bit about them? So, to be fair, I saw this when it first popped up, and then we added it back onto our schedule today because Call of Madness actually got canceled yesterday. They did a super which is short the Cthulhu one we're gonna do. This Man, is a this seven though, day yeah. campaign, so we didn't really have a choice. So, I won't say that I'm as well versed in this as I would like to be. But essentially, what you have here is you've got an amalgamation of three different types of games that are all family weight. So you've got yourself a Scooby-Doo, which is a cooperative game where you're working to find the bad guy. You've got yourself the Looney Tunes, where it's a smash em up, right? You're just fighting each other, like similar to like an unmatched or something like that. Like okay. one person's going to survive. Okay. And then you have this one, which is team play. And this one's kind of more like the Arcadia Quest, kind of like what you're saying, where you have like a certain objectives you're trying to get, but you're trying to, like you'll flip over a card and it says that you've got to go to this place and get roll this die. You've got these negatives, and if you do, you get this victory point. And basically, you're picking teams. They're fighting monsters and whatnot and doing quests to prove they're the better team than the other one. So I'm interested to hear everybody's comments and chat about this particular project because I know our Kickstarter community is very, very smart. So Nosferatu is saying these, cute, these are cute games, and I think they would be awesome for family night, but at that yes. price point, no, sir. 80 bucks for Scooby-Doo. Come yeah. on. That's just, it's too much. It's, yeah. But here's the deal. I... I don't know if this is going to be true, but this is what you called last time Marvel United. I expect to see a reduced, like, two or three mini less, like, game of the Teen Titans one in Walmart for 40 to 50 bucks. Oh, absolutely. So, like... That's what they did with Marvel United. I mean, Marvel United was, like, 80 bucks, and then it was 40 in the store, and you got, like, less figures, of course, less minis, and less overall gameplay. But if you really just want to dip your toes into it, I feel like you're going to find this at Walmart, like... Before the Kickstarter delivers. And you know, we called that on our Kickstarter show. So when we did the Kickstarter show for Marvel United, coming out of the gate, you know, everybody was kind of going back yep. and forth on the gameplay and everything. And just from looking at the gameplay and everything, I'm like, this is going to stores. Like, this is where they're aiming for. I think Come On Games has, they're making, what they're doing is they're making their own games still. So they have their design team that's making games. However, they're also picking up games from, other companies that want to produce those games and that content. So, you know, Warner Brothers or whoever, you know, has that entity has come to them probably and is like, hey, we know that you guys are really skilled in making games, make these games for us. And they're just going through the steps. They're like, all right, we're going to put these games on Kickstarter. We're going to throw them out in the world. They're we're going to deliver our Kickstarter backers. Entry level. So, right? Yeah. That's the idea. That's supposed to be entry level. I think the thing I'm most excited about is I'd love to have these figures from Teen Titan Go, but not at this price point. So, if it comes out at Walmart and it's cheaper, I could see myself picking it up there maybe. And then if I don't like it, moving on. I mean, obviously, some people really enjoy Marvel United. We played Marvel United, and just my quick synopsis of it was it was 100% fine. But there's no way that it pushes any other game off my shelf. So it came in, we played it, and then we passed it on. And that's fine. You know what? Honestly, the thing that nobody talks about is when you only have so much space for games, which everybody has, and so much money and time, sometimes you have to make that choice. Does this game fill a niche that no other game does? Or does this game fill a similar niche that another game has and like actually does it in a way that you feel is better for you? And if it doesn't, it moves on. And wanna, that's kind of what Marvel United was in, and it was out within the same week. I want to go through some of the comments, because we have a lot of good comments coming in. So Matthew says, I feel like it would do better in retail at, it will. as retail, not in Kickstarter. That's why it's a yeah. seven-day mm -hmm. campaign. Absol because, oh, no, absolutely. That's because exactly it's going to be much bigger in retail. <laughs> it's a seven-day campaign to collect up some money up front so that they can produce as many of them as they want. And I have to pay all that money out, out of pocket. Nosferatu says, insert Marvel and... Un <laughs> 
what Marvel United rant here. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So oh, I feel like I fulfilled that part. There. Luke says, for me personally, a family game isn't really a good fit for me in my game groups. I've passed on Marvel United, and I'll pass on this one. I feel like I am in the same boat with that, and I I did pass on Marvel United because of that. Because I was like, all right, that's just not our weight of game. Xavier right. says, I think this is geared to be entry level family and not the hardcore gamer. Yes, yes, I agree, I agree. Alan says, it's classic, come on, overproduction. <sighs> I don't really believe in overproduction, but there is definitely a point where there's more stuff than game. And that well, does here's the thing. I guess that is overproduction. You, I guess I do believe in it. You have people, Hold on. You have people coming through here, like Spin Master, yeah, okay. who they teamed up with for Marvel Games and, or Marvel United and everything. And so they're just, they're getting into the toy industry is what it is, which for Come On Games is smart. It's smart, everyone. They're making a lot of money doing exactly. this. Exactly. Okay, so Matthew brings up a great point. I guess I'm glad people who love these IPs get decent games. Won't bad yourself, true. though. Very, very true. That's a really this good point. This game convinces some new family or someone who's really casually into board games and they've only played Monopoly as a kid into playing this, and then they delve into something that we would consider hobby way or something that you're interested in later, yeah. that's great. And Absolutely. That's, that's what a lot of really good games do. That's the idea of a gateway game. I don't think of gateway game as like a negative verb. Like, a, like I'm not assigning something negative to the game when I say gateway. I'm saying this is something that is like approachable. Somebody plays it. Good example is Parks. Super approachable. Somebody plays it and then I hope they go from Parks and then they play something else and something else and they just get super into the hobby like we are. Because it, it happened for us. We started off playing munchkin <laughs> like before you send us death threats it was monopoly nothing magic the gathering magic the gathering magic the gathering munchkin this yeah so without a game like munchkin and king of tokyo we wouldn't be here i agree pinky and the brain would be an awesome group of characters to play yeah. with i totally agree with that i okay. feel like they almost need to go the full unmatched route though if they're going to be using just ips where it's just very easy to play where they're fighting each other and it's like who can Ooh. win type of thing okay so that's the big thing because comparatively between this and unmatched they're this kind like... of trying to do the same sort of stuff except one's a little bit more hobbyish than the other yeah but i wouldn't say unmatched is hard to play or hard to teach people no it's not i just don't think they have the distribution to be in all the stores quite the same way huh. that come on does come on's got a foot in the door with like walmart and all that right so. there's a lot of people who liked marvel united too so yeah. With this one here, the starting price on this is fifty dollars, and I'm gonna have to say, no. is it really no. for? Is it that's the for cheapest me. one? Yes. Okay, so like the mayhem $50. ones are fifty dollars, and then the Scooby Doo is like eighty, and then if you want combos, it just goes up. Right, I I'm like just, when I'm they say they're gonna here, sa save. save you money, and they save you like yeah, the $5. mayhem pledge, yeah, it's fifty dollars. Okay, I like when games like this say like we're gonna save you money, and it's like five dollars off if you bundle them together. I'm like. So you're telling me if I spend eighty dollars more, I can save five bucks? <laughs> oh, I'm in, baby. So what are you what are you paying for for your fifty dollars? You're paying for all the extra figures that they're going to be creating yeah. in this. Okay, that's the big thing. Is they're creating all the characters, all the IPs that they have to pay for, all the plastic. That's where your money is going. So if you really are excited about this game, I would give it at this Kickstarter level. However, if you just want to try it out, wait for it to be in stores, everybody. <laughs> They're going to make money either way. Here's the deal. you got to remember that this perspective is coming from two people who play hobby games constantly, right? And obviously enough so that we turned our hobby into what she does full time. And, you know, I do an auxiliary thing full time with it. So board games are kind of literally our work and our hobby at this point in time. So for our perspective, like this probably doesn't work for us. But there's a lot of people that just are in different perspectives where yeah. like, their spouse, you know, like, well, for a good example, I've got a buddy um, where his wife likes games. He likes games that they play a lot with his mother-in-law and father-in-law. And the only way to get them to play is something lighter. Right? Yeah. So this might be great for something like that. So I just don't think it matches up for us and our gamer personalities. But if it gets new people into the, if it gets new people into the hobby, then I'm 100% all for it. And I still want all these stupid miniatures because there's a Beast Boy <laughs> as a cheetah. And yes. I want Beast Boy as a cheetah. Look at that. Look at that Happy little green you. cheetah. Oh. Oh, so, cool. so cool. So okay, cool. so Xavier right. says, we do have to appreciate these gateway games because yes. I feel like I would not be a board gamer if it weren't for Ascension. Absolutely. Oh, right? Ascension was one Absolutely. of those ones that I learned in like 15 minutes and then played the crap out of it. Mm -hmm. With, I mean, Ascension was like one of the first deck builders I played. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I'm personally not going to be backing this. Doctor, are you going to be backing this? No. I still want the minis, but, though. No, well, but... 
I if am... I see it at Walmart, I might pick it up. Okay, so if I'm it's cheap enough. One hundred percent down with getting Teen Titans Go at Walmart or Target or wherever I end right. up finding it. The like I just want the Teen Titans Go one. I want the base thing. I don't want any extra stuff. Like I just want that. So that's what I will be doing. The reality is, <laughs> when we had Marvel United, I still almost kept it because I wanted the figures, but I ended up not because I have lots of figures and all kinds of games that I haven't painted. So. The idea that I'm going to keep it so I can paint the figures and display them is a lie. In chat today, are all of you backing any of these games here? Are you guys backing any of the three? Teen Titans. That's the one Teen Titans, wants to back. yeah. yeah. Teen mean, Titans. If good. I was going to back one, it'd be the Teen Titan ones because you're doing a co like Ooh. a semi-cooperative team versus team type of situation. So I feel like that's probably the best one. Lastly... Wow, Lastly, sorry. we have Darwin's Journey. This is by Thundergriff Games. It's going to be for one to four players. And it's going to play in about 30 minutes. This is a strategic worker placement game. This and is a, like a Euro worker placement game. Yes. So you're going to be controlling not only your workers and discovering the Galapagos Islands and kind of having them out there collecting or investigating the wildlife on the islands, but also sailing your ship down there and navigating while also trying to make sure you collect sets of things in order to open up new abilities and collect VP points. There's, I mean, this seems like a heavy Euro game put over this like really, really thematic, beautiful, beautiful look to a game. This is kind of going back and I am sorry, but Alan brought up a good point saying, do any of these IPs have a place in the woke society of the 2020s because you've got Speedy Gonzalez? Yeah, I will say that Looney Tunes, although my kid has seen it, doesn't resonate with them the same way it did with us because there's just more options out there now. I mean, to be honest, cartoons in a lot of ways are better now. They try to tackle real issues. They're more interesting. They're not written by 50, 60-year-old adults trying to talk down to kids. They're written for kids, and there's a big difference. There are a lot of cartoons. I mean, I watch Old Ninja Turtles, and there's, like, the secretary, and the boss is like, she's like, oh, no, Monty, it keep me so away bad. from those yicky frogs. And I'm like, don't tell me there's a secretary in the world that can't tell the difference between a frog and a turtle. It was so Come bad. Come on, it was going back. really was... bad. And, and she was his secretary, not his wife or girlfriend. <laughs> it was really bad. And she'd jump into his arms, and he was, like, balding and short and fat. And, like, it was like, come on. It was too much. I don't think these I, those IPs will ring as well with those. But what it's going to do is get you know, older people to buy the game to hopefully play with their kids and hopefully get them into other games. That's that's my dream in a perfect world. But yeah, I don't know if I would have picked Speedy <laughs> Gonzalez as one of the characters. That's why Teen Titans Go is a much better way to go because kids that are, people that are kids now enjoy Teen Titans Go with their families. That's a much better IP to go after than, say, old Looney Tunes, which if you, I can't go back and watch old Looney Tunes. It just seems like the most boring thing in the world to me now. I need more spice in my life. Darwin's journey. <laughs> How are you feeling about Darwin's journey? Um, go, go ahead. You talk. No, 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 no. You go ahead. Go ahead. So Darwin's journey is a really weird space. I love, like, da like the idea of Darwin, right? Like the whole study of evolution and all that. Like that's something that's very interesting to me. And because that, you like biology. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm a huge yeah. biology. I mean, that's what all of my nerd. early college classes were in biology and anatomy, physiology. Biology nerd. Well, you're always looking up at space. I'm <laughs> and looking, you're looking down, down at the ground. Up, at the ground, right? I care about, <laughs> listen, here's the deal. I care about what's happening on the earth. She cares about what's happening off earth. We're just different people. Here's the thing. I think it's an interesting theme. I think the art is objectively pretty, but it's so skewed towards like that euro -y look. It makes me kind of bored. Like, what? I know, it makes me a bad person, but I look at this and I just, I don't know. It doesn't have to all be cartoons and explosions, right? It doesn't have to be like created by Michael Bay, but the art in this is not super exciting to what? me. What? I know. No. It makes me feel like it's going to, since it no. skews more Euro style kind of I art, love it the makes art. me feel like it's going to be more boring than it actually is going to be. I have a feeling. No, Doctor, you're wrong. I have a feeling this game will probably be better the art. It reminds me of Barrage. Barrage looked like super boring. You and then I played on it. Barrage and it was so good. bad. But, so much poop on Barrage. Hey, <laughs> hey, art is a fickle mistress, right? Like it's a real thing. You have to really like it. And like there's nothing about this. This board is so busy 
It has like so much just random stuff on it that I'm just like, what is happening? It looks like a brain overload. It looks like a game that's just going to be so much. Now, I have when I dug further into it past just the surface looks, when I went past the cover of the book, there does seem to be some very interesting things happening there. And I feel like I would like to play it to figure out if it is for me or not. But just from looks, it looks like a, a quick, easy pass for me because it's just, it looks like a big old Euro. And I just typically stay away from those types of games. Okay. All right. So. Oh, wow. Darwin was like 22 when he set up on the Beagle. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. That was really, that's really interesting. Kungi is like just a well of knowledge. I love yeah. it. <laughs> Let's see. Your sea travel is really hard <laughs> on the body. That's how we got there. Hey, that's scurvy. <laughs> that's what happens when you don't eat oranges. Just take you an orange eat some with fruit, you. Okay? Take one orange with you on some a sea fruit. voyage and you're fine. Just one orange every couple months. I'm going to go back and just say that I first impressions insanely enjoy the art in this game. I feel like Boy, looking at the wrong. map is like looking at an older map and everything with like old pages on it. I think that the theming on this game is just beautiful. Like so, so pretty. I love in the deluxe edition that they have like the actual, like they have squishy wax seals that you can put down there and stuff. Oh. Like the, oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm in the trouble. deluxe edition. Don't even look okay. at it. <laughs> Has a lot of real pretty upgrades, everyone. That's all I gotta say, okay. <laughs> I love all the mechanics that are going on in this game. I, I like worker placement. Well, here's the thing, like, just worker placement is something that is amazing. Can be overdone. Well, However, when you have games come in like dwellings where your worker placement is not just you going there and collecting something, but it's creating this whole other economy of things happening in a, in a game and that your worker placement matters in many different ways, just opposed to collecting one thing. That's when things get really interesting for me. One of your favorite game styles is war games, and they're all 100% the same. You just switch out the color of the tanks and the people, and they're the same game over and over and over again. This square chit says four and three on it, and it's got a little red tank on it. And this chit says three and four on it, and it's got a guy in a little blue outfit. And so that one's from the Civil War, and that one's from World War II. Boring. Um, just one second. Did you want to get kicked off? I'm gonna today? make all the war gamers off? mad at me. I know, right? Listen, here's the You're deal. You're gonna get a burrito slap here in five seconds, Doctor. I can't believe you just said that. War games. So don't talk about my worker placement. Worker placement can be done in <laughs> any genre. It's amazing. It's the. I don't know what is it. Is it like the bread? I don't know. It's something. I don't have a food analogy, but it's amazing. It can be in everything and make everything better. It's the barbecue sauce, if you will. You can take a bad product and put barbecue sauce on it and it'll taste better. All I'm saying is that worker placement games, if you have a wor straight worker placement game where you just don't, go there, you collect something and mm. then you're putting that collection back in your supplies and then maybe you're purchasing something with it, that's like a base level worker placement game. This is not a base level worker placement game. This is where your worker is not only being placed to maybe collect something, but it's also being placed for many other different reasons in your game and you have this progression in the game where your character is going to have more abilities and get stronger as they go along. And it's an incredibly unique process that they have going on in this game. If I had a glass of wine, I would have thrown it at you for that worker placement <laughs> jab. I don't even We're gonna know have to who throw you down. are I'm going to have to turn the camera off and there's going to be a throwdown up in here. I don't even know who you are anymore. <laughs> I'm married a monster. All right, here's the deal. Um... No, just let me scroll down to the wax seal so everybody can see all this uh, majestic yeah. stuff they have here, okay? Well, look at we, these coins. If you're already going to play a Euro game. Well, look like at these a, wax seals. A Euro style. Do you really need the wax seals? This is the whole separate, separate, separate subject. Do you think the wax seals and the coins are worth 20 bucks? Does a worker place? <laughs> yeah, it does. Do you honestly feel like it's worth the $20 upgrade to go for the wax seals and the coins? That's just 100% no real purpose bling. I find Euro games most susceptible to me saying I already have something close enough in my collection. Oh. I think it's because like the art seems similar. Here's the thing though, and I want to make sure that I'm very clear on this. I want to back this game. This is a back for me. Okay. But I'm telling you my initial impressions was like, it looks like it's a lot, but as I dug further into it, I like that there's a lot of variability in it. You're doing different things to unlock the ability to go to different places. And you don't have to worry about somebody already being in a place you're in. You can go there, but it costs you money. 
and it's always a race to be like going further on exploration than somebody else, plus having more orders than somebody else, plus having more correspondence than somebody else. So it seems like there's a lot of things going on to it, but just looking at it, it seems a little bit like Euro overload, overload to me personally. But I do like the overall theme of it, and I 100% want to give it a chance. And so for me, this is a back at retail. Okay, so Dar back at retail seems like a good deal for 55 bucks. I don't think spending an extra $20 for coins and squishy wax. But did you see these foil wooden adventure tokens? Did you it's see a these, Euro game. these foiled tokens right here? I doctor? only want bling if it's going to be <laughs> miniatures and like play mats and. Like hey, crystals listen, instead of listen, cubes. Listen, we have all of the plastic we need in this house. We need some serious wooden tokens. All right, first off, serious wooden tokens. First off, um, Game Trace has something to say to you about that. Yeah. Say we have too much plastic mistakes. in the house again. <laughs> do you want Noah to revoke the paycheck I just got today? Is that what you want? Because he'll do it. He'll be like, snip, you're done. You're out of the family. Thanks a lot. Oh, I think gosh. that. Uh, this is definitely a back for me. I, I thought maybe this week I would go in and not have anything that I wanted back necessarily. Maybe, I always feel bad. The really small games that are like $10, $15, they'll sometimes they'll, they'll be a back, but I always don't think of them as a back because they're so inexpensive that you can back them and not really think about it, right? So I so do feel bad. Here, Cohen, so I was planning on backing on. Mint Bid, but Cohen this one is a back for me. Makes a really good point. So, But for resale, you, you can... Uh, Sell it easier if it has all of the cool tokens and upgrades in it, as opposed to the base game. And that is an excellent point. If you get the game immediately, you don't like it, and you need to resell it right away to somebody who is going to love that game, you can if you do have the deluxe version. I That's have really good. Yeah. Here's my rebuttal, Cohen. One, I hate reselling games. I just okay. hate it. I end up usually giving them away or taking them to a place that'll just take a bunch at once or something <laughs> and give me store credit. I do dislike giving away game or passing games along, right? I don't like it as much. Do I think I would sell it for $20 more by getting the $20 more pledge? I don't know if I would or not. I don't know if someone's going to spend an extra 20 Because here's the deal. You know I have somebody's going to spend extra money. If you're willing to wait yeah. on it. I had a bunch of games that we got that were like, you know, from the last year or so that just didn't make it into our top 10, didn't really find a home for them. So it's ready to move them on. And people are offering me half the price I paid for the Kickstarter form. So I don't think paying 20 extra dollars is going to get me a $20 return. It's like if you're selling your house, sometimes it doesn't make sense to redo your roof. <laughs> like sell your house for $5,000 cheaper instead of spending $15,000 okay. to redo your roof. So Chase says, passing on this, it looks great, but way more interested in Stroganoff. Dropping next month worker placement with art I like way more. Hmm. Okay. So Kabuki says, I never buy anything thinking about resale value. Yeah, That's fair. That's fair. So Because if I buy it for resale, I always end up loving it. Or it is, ends up like where the bottom drops out of the market and I can't sell here's it. Here's the other thing too, everyone. This is from Thunder Griff Games, who have made a lot of really fantastic games. Yeah, we have enjoyed uh, a lot of their catalog. What was it? Tang Garden. They have like hats and stuff like that that we've played that we've really liked. Like, there's lots of games. Amari. Yeah, there's lots of games that they've come out with that I'm really happy and it seems like on the surface like they're pretty easy to play but when you start playing them there's like so much interesting stuff happening in these games so if the company is committed to picking developed board games that are really like intriguing and have new mechanics and stuff like that like I feel like that's what Thunder Griff is going through and doing like they're really trying to pick board games that are going to add something rather than just have like a reprint of something or, okay, we're gonna take these mechanics and put it over on this type of IP, that sort of stuff. You know what I'm saying? I would agree with that. I, I think you're trying to sell the wrong person. I think you're trying to sell me the upgrade pack versus the regular retail. <laughs> I think that's what? what you're trying to sell me. What? I'm just saying it's gonna be good. I'm excited about this game like a lot and I wanna get the deluxe thing because I want those little seals. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I'm not feeling the seals. Want like the seals. If art, they were art, real art, seals, art. they would yes make then the yes. Art, art, art noise. Then art, yes, art, I would. Then they're fine. <laughs> I don't feel like it's it's. I feel like it's considered a Euro game worker placement solely because you have to do so much to unlock the worker placement spots. Otherwise, it would just be yeah. a worker placement. So. I, it's a more complex worker placement, which well, and then, is not always necessarily my bag, but there's been a lot lately that I've played that I've enjoyed. You're also going through the different parts of the island, so like 
you can start on the first island and discover stuff, but like you still might need to like move down and get to the other islands as well to get things. So like there's this whole crazy progression I believe that your characters are going to go through when playing this game and then opening up new stuff to try and collect the things that you want to collect. Like it's going to be one of those rollover mechanics where you're doing little things in the beginning to make very massive things happen at the end, I feel like. Right, and there's a lot of variability in two, so two points, both good and bad. So the good, all the variability means you're never playing the same game twice. The right. bad, I feel like for me, as a person that usually takes at least one play to really hone down mechanics, Oh, it's you're not getting this in one play for you. Two yeah. or three at least before yeah. I really go, okay, I know, enough about I, love that. I know enough about what's going on now <laughs> that you can mix in new things and I understand what I'm trying to do. If, if if I can figure out a game in one play, I usually don't end up liking that game because at that point, it's then it's boring for me. I'm like, all right, like I know how to win this game for the most part and I don't want to play it as much anymore. But statistically, and I'm talking about a person who keeps the stats, you are like 80% more likely to win the first game, especially the more complex it is. So if there's like a scale, the more complex it is, you're just more likely to win it. But then I am 80% more likely to win it the second play once I actually understand what the heck is going on. Right. So. Well, it becomes like a back and forth where, well, you, hold on. Let's go back to, would you back this game? I already said, yeah. Yes, I, I, I would, would back this game. Retail. Chat, are you guys backing this game? I want to know if all you mouth. are. Look at my mouth. Retail, save $20, don't forget about shipping. I would like to go all in on this. So we have Tangarden, <laughs> and we got Tangarden at the retail version, and it, it still looks amazing, and I don't think I missed out by not spending an extra 20, 30 bucks for shipping <laughs> and exclusives to get it. I like exclusives. I would. I, so people are saying that there's but... some expansions and stuff in the exclusives, so I'd have to look at that before I made the final decision. But I have found more and more that it is rare that I, I go all in on something, and I go, man, I wish I would have gotten... How, how can I explain this? Lately, it's been rare that I've gotten to a game and played it so many times that I'm like, oh man, I really wish I would have gone deluxe on this one. The only notable exception has been Dwellings, where I'm like, man, I really wish I would have gone more in on this one because it ended up being so good. But so many games end up being good, but not amazing that I'm not like, oh man, I wish I would have spent 40 extra dollars on this game. That's my feeling. What if we just didn't like pay the kid their money for allowance and then we took that money and then we got the extra stuff? Do we pay our kid allowance? <laughs> you get paid allowance? <laughs> Have you really been getting allowance for how long? <laughs> this is a thing? Wait a minute, why the F don't I get allowance? I work every day, most days. Your allowance is my allowance. I'm taking that allowance to, and using it on this extra thing. <laughs> That was a Kamugi says a cheat the kids. Good plan. <laughs> yeah, I've just been given. I've been given the kids one extra every single week. Yeah. Where I'm like, oh, oh that's you really get nice a, of you. Yeah, I'm like, you picked up the dog poop. Yeah, here's an extra. Here's an extra, here's an extra. Tray. Don't put it in the extra. <laughs> but if you did, that lid locks tight. I don't know if it'll save the freshness, but it does lock tight. <gasps> oh my goodness! Yeah, Darwin's journey looks amazing. Please everybody. don't put poop yeah. in your extra. No, everybody. don't do that. Don't. <laughs> don't do that. They are inexpensive enough. You could use them for a doggy bag if you didn't have one. Gross. But I wouldn't recommend Gross. it. Gross. All right. <laughs> you done? I wanted to say something that's too gross. I'm not going to. Am I late? You are. You missed everything, Christian. <laughs> I'd work for some extra game trace as Xavier. Yeah, I would say the takeaway from this is come on. Come on, Project Wait seems for retail. Like it'll be better when you get it at Walmart for $20, $30 cheaper. And Darwin, back that. Epic Mint. 7, only if you like that the game. That game. And, and then Mint, Mint Bid is $10. Why not? $10. Let's do that. If yeah. you like bidding games, just go for it. So there you go. There's a recap there. I think we already know what the where the burritos are going. So this burrito is going for Darwin. And this burrito here is going for the upgrade to Darwin right there. So they're going out the door like that. Ta-da! <laughs> I live with this. 
<laughs> it has been, I looked at my Google map stats and I've only driven 460 miles this year. Oh my gosh. That means gosh. for the whole year, I've been this close to this Reach. mess every day. <laughs> Please send help. Tail is the real winner this week. Please send help. Uh, come on's project is all about giving them constant cash flow. It makes sense. It's a yeah. smart business plan, you know? <laughs> yeah, Carnegie is an interesting one. I've seen a little bit about it, some teaser stuff. Okay. I think Rune Lords is next week. Oh, yeah, Rune um, Lords is next week. There's oh, a couple different God. things that are coming out. So excited. Okay, so next week's plan. We are going to be playing Rune Lords for sure. We're going to have oh, another. Lord. We're going to have another game that we're going to have next week. I don't think we've decided on it just it's yet. Not, so it's not going to be Radlands next week from Rockley. That's no, that's the week after because the they had to move it. Yes. Oh, I know so. a game we could play. Guess what we're getting in on Saturday? We should be getting in Ruins of Honor on Saturday. So as long as she are doesn't you hate it, teach it really fast. Like, well, we're gonna have to learn a game that's either a fast way for turn Thursday. Around. Hey, <laughs> we're gonna have to learn a game anyways for Thursday. So what's the difference? <laughs> If you want to see, <laughs> if you want to see ruins of Anarch or however you say it, then leave a comment on the video below and let us know because we could learn that one potentially, or I can maybe find a copy of Dune Imperium and try to learn that one. Depending on that. That's a lot of promises it. you're giving our community. No, I'm asking them so I know which one to pursue. Do I pursue right. ruins? Do I pursue Dune Imperium? Like I don't know. Somebody uh, make a make a choice. So we're gonna play in two. Christian says ruins is excellent. Ooh. And I trust him in the realm of worker placement games. So we're gonna be playing two different games next week on Tuesday and Thursday, and then we're also going to be continuing our Kickstarter show because I think we have enough Kickstarters going on now. Yeah, that's the general and plan. Then... Assume there'll be a Kickstarter show, and if not, there'll be something to replace it. Yeah. And then, what is it? Tonight. February. Well, February, no. the hype train comes back, and tonight, we're going to do a video game. Couldn't potentially the hype train come back sooner, though, if it just gets booked sooner? Well, that's true. If somebody if somebody books on the hype train, then that's we'll too... go ahead and right. do something sooner, okay? <laughs> but we're going to play an app-based game tonight, right? We are. We're going to go ahead and play a game tonight. So we are going to continue. This is the big one. We're going to continue our app-based games and video game series yeah, like that we, we're week. doing. Just okay? like a little a little mm -hmm. taste of some different app games, maybe hit up some favorites we have. Absolutely. And so those are going to be in the evenings at 7, so what? the same time that we stream board game content and coverage. But it's going to be on Fridays as well, so you can catch us for our Kickstarter show, and then you can go ahead and catch, catch us in the evening for our video game slash app-based game battles and stuff, which I'm really, really excited about. So let's see here. Look I'm at that. So Petter says ruins like 500 times. <laughs> But Christian Strain, the designer of Asking for Troubles, they played Ruins three times today. Oh, oh three really? times. Sorry, three times in three days. Still, that's every day. That's good. That's how I felt about Dwellings. And that's not because, you know, you work for Breaking Games. Where I played it, and I played it, and then I'm like, I got to learn the solo. And I've been thinking about every single day about just playing Dwellings. So that's like my newest, like, fixation right now. All right. Is there anything else that we need to announce? Oh, if you are new to this channel, make sure to like and subscribe to our content. Ring that bell yes. for when we go live. I do have one announcement. Okay. After your comments earlier about worker placement, I'm single. And uh, <laughs> burrito slap right in the face for that. Said no. <laughs> yeah, Ruins has been hard to find. I picked it up when somebody posted it, like a sale on a ding and dent. And I was like, you know what? I'll ding and dent. I'll ding and dent. If I'm paying for this show, I'll ding and dent. So I did it. Dwellings is my best game of 2020. I would agree with that. It's so good. It's, it's so, so good. Yeah, I haven't given it an official spot, but it's easily the top five. Probably top three. Maybe number one. D I don't know. Discord disco party. Absolutely. So if everybody yeah. wants to continue the conversation, make sure to check out our Discord in the link below. And if you want to go ahead and contribute to supporting our show, make sure to check out our Patreon link. I actually have some blooper footage that I need to cut together that I should be putting up for next week. I'm really excited about it. We did the best Kickstarter of 2020 for Tantrum House. We did like a little snippet. And like I was saying in the beginning, our actual footage that was usable was like this much. And then like our blooper footage was like this much. We could not like stop laughing. Like it was... It was a train wreck, is what it was. Okay, and you all can enjoy. You all can enjoy that train wreck. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for being on the show. Because oh, yeah. the show is what it is because of the viewers. We 100%. can do this recorded and we do it live because Listen. we specifically want to talk to you and we like your opinions and the comments and everything. So I just wanted to say thank you 
more than anything else. And if you like our content, definitely like and subscribe. We'd love to have you here. 100%. Like, this show is so unique because of everybody that comments in it and all of you giving your opinion and bringing up really, really, really good points during like these. Promise. So Yes. So, Excited like, about that one. We appreciate it so, so much, and we love the interaction. We love talking to all of you and getting to know you, and you all are amazing out there. Keep being amazing all weekend. We will see all of you later. Bye.